Hello, and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Martha Booker Johnson, and I am the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation, or ask a voice question by raising your hand once the presentation is complete. Today's speaker is Macarius Itambu. Macarius is a research associate in the Department of Archaeology at the Max Planck Institute of Geoanthropology. His research is focused on exploring and underscoring Pleistocene hominin, hominin behaviors in relation to food procurement strategies, stone tools manufacture, and the synergetic links between hominin environmental interactions, cognition abilities, and subsistence systems, and stone tool technological innovations. Please join me in welcoming Macarius as he gives his talk, The Renewed Archaeological Research and New Discoveries in Singida Region, Central Tanzania. My talk to you today will be about the new archaeological research and the new discoveries from uh, Central Tanzania in Ikungi District, Singida Region. Basically, I'll be talking about uh, the area that it didn't receive much archaeological research in the country. So whenever you speak about the archaeology of Tanzania or anything about Tanzania, people know more about Zanzibar than Tanzania itself. Secondly, people across the globe are aware of Serengeti National Park, most of them. But also the Kilimanjaro, which is the highest peak in Africa, is more popular even than the country itself. And interesting story, but also whenever you talk to archaeology, people will speak or say about or mention about old gods, which is a crowd of humankind. These are the things that are uh, known globally, probably um, more famous and popular than the country itself. But Singida um, and other areas in central Tanzania are not known archaeologically as comparable to all the vigors in, in northern Tanzania. So my talk today will focus on this part of central Tanzania, which is Singida, the area that has been marginalized by many researchers in terms of archaeology, research, and other projects related to heritage management and conservation in Tanzania. Singida, as you see, as you can see from map, is located in the central part of Tanzania, adjacently to the capital city, which is Dodoma, is about a commercial city. It has um, five districts, Singida Rural Urban Municipality, Singida Town, and Ikungi, where this uh, study was conducted. Uh, the new discovered site, uh, which uh, I'm going to share with you today, uh, Kere Kungi Rock Shelter. Kere is also a rock shelter, a class of rock shelter, and Itamuka Rock Shelter, the site that have been working since 2020. Uh, in terms of archaeology, uh, this area experienced archaeological research during the colonial period, and most of the research in this area were focusing uh, on studying rock part of Kondoa in central Tanzania, and some part of Iramba and the northern Singida axis. As uh, you see from map, the area is uh, generally one can say is the archaeological terra incognita, no research. Uh, recently that we are carried out before this study. Most of the studies in Tanzania are being conducted uh, in Iringa region, Southern Tanzania Highland. And you can see, you can find a few along the coast and the majority of archaeological races have been conducted in Northern Tanzania. They like yes, Basin, uh, Olduvai, Turkana and the areas that are bordering Tanzania and Kenya. Uh, those areas have received a good number of research activities uh, that you cannot compare with the Singida. So during the last two years, we worked in Ikungi. The Ikungi is located uh, uh, is about um, 25 kilometers 
uh, northeast of the Singida capital at the municipality, whereby you see the area is surrounded with granite outcrops of the Precambrian -Pre era, uh, which uh, most of the site we were digging are found under the rock shelters, as you can see from this map. Um, uh, during the 2021, this is the year that we discovered many archaeological sites than ever. Uh, I worked with, uh, I had a 41 University of Dar es Salaam undergraduate student who were taking their field practicum in archaeology, whereby we were able to, find, to find more than 10 archaeological sites. Most of them were rock shelters with rock paintings and other archaeological currencies. But also we found a good number of Middle Stone Age sites to Iron Age sites. Uh, so we located a later Stone Age site, which is known as Nkungi, which is again is an open air site. Uh, we also found human remain at the site, famously known as Tamuka Rock Shelter. I'm going to share the finding from the, this rock shelter later. Um, this is where we uh, firstly uh, established our trench at Nkungi. Nkungi is a cluster of rock shelters. They, you can see one of the I, most iconic in the Siuyo village, iconic outcrops, as you can see from this map, where we established two or three trenches from this area. And uh, we were able to recover a good number of uh, historical uh, materials, um, later Stone Age and the Middle Stone Age stuff. Again, uh, from this uh, uh, rock uh, site, Kungi, which is an open air site, very, very close to that big outcrop. We, from 100 meters away from this uh, outcrop, the rock boulder, we established a trench two by two. We dug up at and up to uh, 150 centimeters deep. We were able to encounter the human crania. So when we continue digging up to 160 to 170 centimeters, we were able to recover human uh, maxillary and the mandibular bones. And later on, when we continued down, we were able to recover several individuals that were buried underneath. Again, we continue digging. I will establish another trench 100 meters away from trench one. We were able to encounter uh, middle stone age to later stone age stone artifacts, stone tools, but there were no human remains. Most of the stone tools were made from chairs. Um, of course, mostly of them were quartz and quartzite. Uh, around the human skeletal remains, we are able to find a human bone in the association with these uh, tools. This one looked like grinding stones, but also we found uh, it was a pitted, uh, something like a pit in, uh, in between. Uh, we presume this could be ochre processing uh, tools because uh, one of the sites nearby had rock out of hunter forages that we are painted in a, rock, in, a, in a red color. We are also able to find some level of flags and scrapers and the blades uh, from the very same site. But also we were able to find a good number of back pieces, points and uh, flags. Uh, at the second site, which is a uh, northern uh, it was uh, eastern part of Nkungi, about 45, not 45, 5 kilometers from Nkungi, uh, is the Tamuka Lok Seta. This is uh, an interesting story here because when we were uh, digging, uh, before even digging, when we visited the village, we went to see the village officials to introduce ourselves that we were there 
and we went to do archaeological research with students from the University of Dar es Salaam. So whenever people saw us, they thought that we are miners, we are going, we are looking for minerals. So the very same night they went to destroy the site, they went to vandalize, uh, thinking that we are looking for the minerals. So before we are, as they say, before this guy arrived, we need to go and see what they are looking. So we went the next day, we found that our, our site was destroyed terribly by the hunter foragers and they, were, uh, they exposed some fauna remains. So when I went there, I was shocked to find a very huge uh, hole that was dug by treasure hunters. So the very same day, I went to do a survey. I was doing survey anyway, because in the archaeological field school with students, whenever you go there the first, uh, first day, you want to do any archaeological excavation. You introduce students to the site, you do archaeological excavations. Uh, no, you, sorry, you do archaeological survey. So in my intention was to take the student here and just, uh, show them the rock paintings, teach them uh, about the rock art, types of rock art, their tradition, style, subject matters. But contrary, we found this hall that you see here. So what we decided then, that's because we also, when we were looking around, we, we saw human remains. So I decided to do archaeological digs. It was terrible. I was hit by, on my, uh, of course, my back by one of these uh, slabs. So we decided to dig. Fortunately, we found that human scar uh, that uh, I, I, I show you in the previous slide. This, when I was continuing digging, this very same day that we encountered this uh, human scar. In association also with stone tools and a lot of fauna of remains of animals, but also the post-cranial bones were destroyed heavily by the treasure hunters. Uh, at the same site also, there are uh, rock painting, rock art. Uh, we did a uh, studying of rock art. I teach my students, then I left there. I went to another site that we discovered. Uh, we found another site which was not reported before by scholars of archaeology. These are two sites. One is called Isuma, whereby we found that uh, picture painted on the rock panel of the baboon, I can say, as you can see from the picture over there. But the second one, which was also destroyed, uh, its form was destroyed by treasure hunters, had the excellent, this I can say excellent uh, uh, animal figures, naturalistic animal uh figures you can see a rhino and it is uh, islands depicted with a uh, red color this a uh, hunter forager rock painting which are very similar to the one that you can find in Kondoa, iran in, in the doma again we are able to find another site which is Kere. We found our known figures, kind of engraving. I don't know. I'm still working. So when I was doing in ethnography with the Nyaturu people from that area, I was not able to get the meaning of these uh, engraved features on the rock surface. So what I decided maybe this year, whenever it goes, I want to go to the Sandawe people and ask or compare to, to see if they know about these features. Currently, I don't know. And my ethnographic inquiries uh, wasn't fruitful because you nobody know, knows. Another site also that we discovered last year was in Misuga. This is uh, containing the Bantu speakers art, uh, which you can see from these pictures, reptiles are depicted, they are painted on the shelter's wall, uh, various reptiles, the moon, and turtle, um, snakes, we have crocodiles, we have alligators. Uh, from that, the site is, uh, has a very excellent painting and its status of preservation is very good. But also another site is uh, I found in Augauga village, uh, about 25 kilometers from Singida municipality. We discovered the site with rock guns. 
These are the features that we are never reported. We are not reported by researchers before. For the first time, we're able to spot these uh, features that we are made. Uh, ethnographic inquiries from the living communities, they say that they play this, they went to hit the stone that could produce a sound like a music. So gone for them, they say like traditional uh, music uh, instrument, according to the Nyaturu people who are living in that area. Another site also we discovered uh, with uh, this cupel art, uh, the, these engraved features, are uh, from different three, these are from different three sites. One in Ngage, this one, uh, the features that you know, made on the surface, on the slab, a small stone, not a big granite outcrop like, uh, like the one I presented before, but also the surface also has uh, lithic tools, uh, grinding stones on the farmland scattered every, uh, everywhere, and uh, pesto rubber. Other one also has an engraved feature like that. This one was uh, away from this one, was about one kilometer away from this site. This uh, were the thing also that we discovered in, in Singida for the first time, and we are not reported by archeologists before. So the problem with uh, this site are vandalized mostly by hunter foragers, oh, no, not sorry. Most the hunter foragers are at site with that art. Local people believe that the art is the area or the landmark or beacon that the German colonialists put to, lock, to mark or locate the area whereby they did hide their precious minerals, games, or let's say ancient coins when they were defeated by British during the first and second world wars. So for them, to the local people, the hunter foragers rock art uh, was made by Germans to mark or locate the places that they did hide their uh, minerals. So all the rock art you find in Singida, Tanzania, their flows are big holes that we are dug by these treasure hunters with the, this fake claim or myth of finding or looking precious minerals that were hidden by German colonialists. They, this myth is terrible because uh, uh, the, led to the destruction of law of a good number of, of sites. Almost all the sites with the rock paintings are being destroyed by uh, treasure hunters. So this study was, uh, I was able to do that with the University of Dar Islam student because I have small grant from the Max Planck societies that helped me to collect a sample to bring to, to, to send them to, to, to German for radio carbon dating. I went there and also I participated during the radio carbon dating, especially carbon 14 and this table I set up analysis. I had also small grant from African humanity postdoctoral fellows that also enabled me to do research in Singida. I went to Germany to do radio carbon dating and the date for this uh, human remains that I uh, did discover in Singida uh, coming soon. I will be able to speak about the chronology at the edge of the site. Uh, currently, we don't have uh, dates. So in Singida, because uh, this is like a new research project, so I'm planning to go this again this year to collect more samples or sediment sample for phytology analysis, for biomarkers, for bark isotope analysis, uh, so more samples for lithic analysis. But also more importantly, I will go this month at the end of month with my friend from Sirig, uh, from Sirig in Spain, Dr. Pierre Etienne Mathe to collect more sediment samples for archaeomagnetism. So because the site are being vandalized by these treasure hunters, I decided to conduct a uh, public engagement program, outreach program, to promote awareness of the art, conservation, and the management of the site uh, by the local community living around the site. So in this picture, I invited the vice chancellor from the University of Dar Islam, Professor Anangise William, who came, visited the site, and they had time to talk to the village chairman and other local officials about the significance of 
conservation of Singeda heritage patrimonies. But also we had a discussion with the local people, the elders, about the importance of the site and to remove the myth that it is a kind of art and the thing that we are made by our ancestors and not by German colonialists. So there is no need to, to, to dig under the, this rock shelter with the fake claim of finding or looking for precious, precious metals. But also we invited the University of, uh, uh, no, our student also invited uh, second school students, primary school student. Uh, we did the exhibition of archaeological artifact to show to them that it is actually a cultural materials made, which were being made or used by our ancestors and not minerals. Uh, importantly, we invited the Director General Antiquities from the, from the Ministry of Natural Resources and Tourism, Dr. Christopher Jantandu, this here, this one, also was talking to my student about the need of serious community engagement program in the area in order to fight this, uh, uh, the pro this problem of vandalism and promote awareness on heritage conservation in Singida region. So we were lucky when we were digging kids from the village used to visit us. Here I have given them my coffee mug, they're drinking tea. One of them was saying that he actually drank tea for the first time in his life. Uh, yeah, that's life of the people from the rural. <laughs> Singida in Tanzania. So the plan now is uh, to conduct research in central Tanzania, especially Singida, in order to be able to connect the Singida site with the Kondoa, with the Iringa Highlands, with the author of rock painting of northern uh, Tanzania, Yas Basin, and the uh, lake region is to see if the artists were actually the same people who moved from one place to another, and probably the painters or the artists were the same people who occupied a similar ecological setting during the day, time in question. Thank you so much. The end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. We can now begin the question and answer section. The question and answer section will be open to voice questions as well as written questions. If you would like to ask a question, just raise your hand in the nonverbal controls present underneath the participant panel, and I will send you a request to unmute. If you prefer to ask a written question that is also still possible, you can do so using the Zoom's chat module, and as usual, I will read out the question. Please remember that the webinars are recorded so that if you ask a question, this will be part of the recording and will be released on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for this fantastic talk. I mean, oh, the images are just, yeah, I feel like I'm walking around there and en enjoying the village. And it. I can't imagine doing this work while also <laughs> taking care of 41 undergraduates. I hope Thanks. they're great. I mean, it's a huge <laughs> project and you should be, really pleased with how it's turned out. I mean, it's such a, as you say, it's such a terra incognita there as far as the archaeology. So I just wanted to thank you for coming and sharing that with us. And I had one, just a very small question about the uh, rock art at uh, uh, Sumwa and Mitunti. I, I, I can't read my own handwriting here. Uh, it looked like a vervet monkey to me with a very long tail. And you, you called it a baboon. And, and then it occurred to me, I, I've, heard, I've seen people talk about baboon in rock arts, but I've never heard people talk about vervet monkey, the tumbili in rock art. And yet that's what it looked like to me. And I wonder if that's because the tail maybe isn't always so well preserved. If a, with a short tail, we might assume it's a baboon rather than, I wondered if you just had any comments about that particular painting. Thank you so much, Bonnie. That's an interesting question, actually. So this uh, preliminary data, I can say, uh, I agree with you. Uh, when I was working, working with, alongside with the local community, the local, one of the local informant, uh, an old man mentioned to me that is a monkey, but 
to me also i agree with you this the tail the morphology look more like, uh, to me uh, like a vivid monkey although the local claims baboon but to me i think i concur with you but because uh, this are uh, just uh, new discovery haven't published anywhere so i will cross check with the other uh, literatures other people like masao who worked in the same place and the others because you know like i haven't seen a uh, vivid monkey painted anywhere in tanzania this was for first time so i think it's a good idea you you are, you were able to to spot this the whole local community say this is baboon probably because baboon are currently found uh, around the vicinity of the sites uh maybe they associate it with baboons but i can i can i can i can say to me also the first time i saw it i thought it was vivid monkey that sounds like a story you could make just about different interpretations you say was it it's like a story there about different interpretations they create a different meaning about it perhaps based on their experiences yeah. today yeah because the area is also surround, surrounded by vegetation whereby we you, now if you go you we find some baboons probably because of that that the local people they say yeah these are baboons but probably mm -hmm. i i think for me it looked like more like a vivid monkey sorry i was uh wondering if you have already identified the origin of the bones all domestics or whatever what do we identify that uh well, human bones and the animal bones, that is a preliminary analysis. So um, the analysis to diagnose the species, okay, to go okay. at the species level, not, not yet because uh, uh, the, the, the guy who is doing phone analysis for me, hasn't sent me a result yet. I'm waiting from him to see if the animal bones uh, belongs to wild animals or domesticates. Mm -hmm. That is interesting thing I'm waiting for now to know. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if the education system has taught children in the public school about the rock art sites at Ikolo in Usandawe or not yeah that's a very interesting question bonnie because the one of the factors that made me to study archaeology was that because i we have been studying that rock painting in tanzania are found in usandawe only even the books in tanzania primary school secondary school saying in in in, in, in usandawe kondawa irangi so when i want to study the university about the rock art then i was raised a hunter for myself i used to hunt i used to sleep overnight to these rock shelters so i saw the art when i was kid i was uh i used to hunt with my grandfather who was an active hunter for it i was just under himself so so when it, I, they were teaching me about that myself in my heart i didn't tell my teacher i say no they are not limited to condo only that's why i decided to go to do masters my master was in rock art so now we are every time we go to Singeda, even if in our homesteads, in our farmlands, we discover this most of these rock paintings actually are found in people's homes around the farmland of the our neighbors, our colleagues, our relatives. So now people know because uh, when I was doing public archaeology, I invited the secondary school teachers. Uh, primary school teachers, they are students telling them that uh, rock art is not limited to Sandawe only. Even if found in, in your farmland, even if found in, in the pros proximities of your homesteads. So at least from the area where I'm working, now people we have uh, we are able to change that uh, perspective. People now know. Uh, are not limited to Sandawe. This is a continuation of the painting, the art from somewhere in the north to central Tanzania. And now most of them, especially the teacher, they know that are spread from Singida to Iringa. And yeah, 
people now, yeah, but before that was difficult to convince them until I took some, we went to visit together to show them. Some of them were shocked to say, oh, I'm 83 years old. I was born in this village. I haven't seen this. This is crazy. So it was like that. People were like, wow, he said, really? Yeah, I told them, really, this is uh, rock art. Yeah, it was like that. So there's a question from Daniela in the chat. Thanks for this great talk. I missed the beginning of the presentation. Could you please tell me from which site was the grindstone with ochre residue? Is it from an MSA context? Uh, from that one was uh, from the Nkungi open air site. That was uh, uh, from a trench. 150 centimeter deep in association with the human remains. The materials that we were finding, stone tools were later stone age mainly. But in that, the very, very same trench we dug up to three meters and we, 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 we retrieve a good number of middle stone age materials, especially lithics, but there was no human remains. So I presume this is a Holocene or later Stone Age individual, not Middle Stone Age Ineas because of association. But also again, I did the radio uh, carbon dating, carbon 14 uh, dating. Uh, in gentleman at the Max Planck. So we are gonna know the date soon, probably at the end of this month, we're gonna have actual dates from uh we try to date uh tooth enamel so we're gonna have radio carbon dates for that individual but that uh human skeletal remains we found in association with those kind of uh tools that uh, i did show that in my my talk thank you so much Macarius, you mentioned a little bit about connections between different sites in Tanzania, and I don't really know anything about rock art, so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Before my research, uh, what we, we, we knew was the rock art of central Tanzania, Kondoa, and the Mumba in Lake Yasi Basin. And one of the famous sites, uh, uh, Nasera in Audubon, close to Audubon, Serengeti. So nobody, when I was a student by then, that was the story. But um, later on, we discovered the rock arts in, uh, in, 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 in Iringa, in the Tanzania Highland. But also some of the hunter foragers uh, rock art were reported in Isimeu and the Mara regions uh, nearby Lake Victoria. So that was the story, but nobody. And later, Singida was known for rock art, but in northern axis of Singida, mostly. The area that I'm digging nobody reported the presence of rock painting before. So for me, my assumption or hypothesis is that the painters who made rock art in Kondo are the same, actually the same population that probably scattered through from North, then Tanzania, through the Central to the Southern Tanzania, Holland. Hunter forage, as you know, people are mobile, eh? moving here and there. So. And the ecology, the Precambrian outcrops, those are uh, granite rocks, are they similar? The same. So why not, it's, uh, like say, the painters maybe the same uh, community that uh, during the later Stone Age period we are moving from one place to another. That the the thing, the link that I, I want to do, but not to establish the link from painting only. I'm also digging under the rock shelters with the rock art. The try to link by the association of the materials that I'm encountering from the rock shelters of Singida to compare them with the materials known from the rock shelters of Weyasi. 
from Iringa, from Kondoa, and see if they compare, they do compare or differ. Though I, I think they probably the artists we are the same people because of the closeness or proximity of the geographic uh, locations or regions. That is my assumption. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. I think those are all of the questions and comments for today. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. I would like to thank Macarius again for his presentation and everyone else for participating today. And I hope to see you again at our next webinar on Wednesday, the 22nd of February by Jeremy Coburn and titled Soldier Report, Update on Hadza Language Vitality.